Ruby is licensed and produced by Roostative, created by Monty Ohm. Please support the official release. Hello there, YouTube. Jack here. More Ruby, Volume 5, Chapter 5. Take 7. It's not crashing. It's, it's, it's fascinating. I think I just spent 20 minutes just getting to this point. But paranoid here. <sighs> okay. If this crashes again, screw the screen recording. <laughs> I'm just gonna download it. Yeah. Volume 5, Chapter 5, Necessary Sacrifice. That, along with the thumbnail of these White Fang goons, does not really uh, bode well for this episode. I just, I don't like the White Fang, I'm sorry. I'm sure there are a lot of fangirls out there who are all over Adam or so on, but I really don't like them and consequentially I don't like episodes where they are the focus all that much. <laughs> Which unfortunately falls back a lot on Blake since, you know, Blake heavy episodes tend to be White Fang heavy episodes. So, with that rant out of the way, what else could there be? Well, Ruby is still, t Ruby and Ranger are still training with Oscar Ospin and Crow, uh, White and Yang, White, <laughs> Weiss and Yang uh, joined up, which is great actually. Just don't play home again. I really can't handle that song. And getting a bit of backstory from Raven, which I wonder what it's gonna be about really. I mean, either she really knows some dark secrets about Ospin, which I wouldn't be surprised if she did. Like, I'm sure the man has some skeletons in his closet. Or, you know, just perhaps it's paranoia. I'm honestly more leaning towards the first option. Well, we shall see, but then again, just please don't make this a full Might Fang episode. I really don't like them. So, onwards then, with this episode in 3, 2, 1, go! Menagerie. Okay. Are you ready? So peaceful and quiet. I've up on giant monsters and robots more than once. I think I can handle getting a few signatures. You are way too optimistic about this. Your chieftain needs you. Like, Your seriously. <laughs> Join the fight and help us save Haven Academy. Yeah, they are not too thrilled about the whole prospect, but are you kidding me? Actually, we bothering have someone with your skills on our side. <laughs> <to save. laughs> Mata. Your skills. What kind of skills? Get back inside. Mom, you are not going anywhere. I mean, I would say there are some people inclined to actually help. Just the overall negativity is winning out, I'd say. Huh? Kind of like that. Well, that seems to have been an overall productive morning, or don't noon. Get it. How can they just sit around and do nothing with the White Fang getting ready to attack? Because not everyone is like you and me. You know, Honestly, not their problem. The ones that weren't born on the island moved here because they were tired of fighting. Or that. Of having to struggle constantly. Menagerie is filled with people that just want to be left alone. And here we are asking them to put the rest of the world before themselves. That actually works as a way better explanation. The problem is, whatever happens at Haven is going to affect them whether they like it or not. If Adam gets his way and Haven falls, it's only going to make things worse for the Faunus. Everywhere. Adam. He's the guy you used to work with? <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> 
sorry. Forget I brought it up. No, it's okay. Have you ever met someone and thought to yourself, they are the personification of this word? Uh... Okay, well, I remember getting to know Ruby and thinking, this girl is the embodiment of purity. Uh, okay. <laughs> After a while, I saw Weiss was defiance, and Yang was strength. What am I? Jerry's still out on that one. <laughs> uh, I'm leaning towards Ernest. <laughs> I do love the way her, her ears perked up when he asked, by the way. At first I thought Adam was justice. Then I thought he was passion. But over time I realized I was wrong. He wasn't any of those things. He was spite. Not hatred, not rage, spite. Seems he to fit in pretty well. Equality, only suffering for what he feels the world did to him. And his way of thinking is dangerously contagious. That's what worries me about Ilya. She's not like Adam. Not yet, at least. Well, you know, they're kind of setting her up like a character to be saved. Or sacrificed. She was. Her chameleon traits meant she could pass as human. She could have lived a normal life if she wanted. But she didn't. I always admired that. She lost her family in a mining accident when she was young, and she joined the White Fang. Like me, she was more or less trained on the road alongside other Fomics. She learned to survive, to defend herself. But as people like Sienna and Adam started to gain a following, she became more dangerous. I guess I did too. I was gonna say. <laughs> I mean, I'm not holding it against her, just... Get me to leave with them, but you know. I refused. I had Adam and Ilya, after all. We know we're going to have to face her eventually. I know. So, what are you going to do? I'm going to try and help her the way you helped me. Hmm? How? You showed what? me that sometimes you need to be there for a friend, even when they don't want you to be. Oh, okay. I was drowning in guilt and fear. I tried to push you away, but you didn't give up on me. Oh, you yeah. There. Volume 4. I was kind of stuck on the whole scene with Yang and talking about her backstory, burning the candle or whatever the episode was called. Yay, more Oscar, which is still the, the best plot point of this whole volume so far. It's almost dinner time. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. I was about to call it a night anyway. So, you've never fought before? Just the occasional small grin. Okay, that's so. that's still impressive, I'd say. <laughs> you look like a natural. Well, I Strange. think that's because he has kind of Ospin in his head and body. I've had it for a lifetime, longer, even. I sound like a crazy person. I mean, uh, yeah, just a little. <laughs> but at this pace, you'll be combat ready in no time. That's sure a thing to say, huh? Well, uh, Certain phrasing. Upstairs. How do you handle all of this? What do you mean? I'm scared. I'm more scared than I've ever been. Reasonably so, I'd say. <laughs> I never thought was possible. I always knew that I wanted to be more than a farm hand, but this? would ask for this you know then again that kind of fits too with the name of the episode of necessary sacrifice we all went to beacon because we wanted to help people sacrificing the life you had planned for yourself or something <laughs> none of us asked for this either just have to press on and How can you be so confident? People have tried to kill you. The world's about to go to war all over again. How are you okay with any of this? I think she's just naturally optimist. <laughs> Optimistic. When Beacon fell, I lost two of my friends. Penny Polandina and Pira Nikos. I didn't know them for very long, but... That doesn't change the fact that they were two of the most kind-hearted people I'd ever met. But that didn't save them. 
pure thought that if there was even the smallest chance of helping someone, that it was a chance worth taking. And because of that, she died fighting a battle she knew she couldn't win. And Penny was killed just to make a statement. By Pyrrha too. Sorry. I am just to nail the point home. But not just for me. What happened at Beacon shows that Salem doesn't care if you're standing against her or not. She'll kill anybody. And that scares me most of all. Pyrrha. Penny. I'd be lying if I said that it didn't hurt. That I didn't think about them every day since I lost them. That I didn't wish I had spent more time with them. If it had been me instead, I know they would have kept fighting too. No matter how dangerous it was. So that's what I choose to do. To keep moving forward. Well... I think she's got the motivational speech down. Come on. I mean, we don't hurry. Nora's gonna eat everything. Kind of emotional backstory too. Time. <laughs> In that sense, but still, hey, Oscar, motivational speech for the win. This isn't gonna be easy, but the fact that you're even trying says a lot about you. That it Better does. You think. I mean. I guess ignoring the voice in your head can be a bit She really is remarkable, isn't she? Difficult. Yeah. She must have been one of the best huntresses at Beacon, huh? <laughs> in some ways, yes. But in many others, no. She has her quirks, her faults, <laughs> just like everyone else. But she also possesses something unquantifiable. A spark that can inspire others even in the darkest of times. I guess, as he's just learned. <laughs> this must be really hard on her, too. It most assuredly is. Also, it's nice to get some honest opinions from Ospin. Your Every thoughts. now and then. And again, no significance. he's always kind of keeping secrets and everything. If leader Taurus wishes to proceed, then we shall make it so. Of course, brother. Perhaps some planned assassination or something? Sister Ilya, thank you for meeting with us. How may I be of assistance? Please, stand. We have wonderful news. What is oh, it? Oh, so wonderful. We finally received a message from the Mistral Brotherhood. The operation was a success. Adam Taurus has claimed his place as the High Leader of the White Fang. Good. Yes, and good. Well, we Varied with honor. The other branches of the Fang have been given the story that was agreed upon. A necessary sacrifice. Or we that. We forget everything she did for us. Indeed. Your maturity and understanding in regards to this matter is appreciated. And it is why we've summoned you here this evening. The White Fang is experiencing... A transitional period. That's Growth one way to call it. <laughs> and change can be painful. If it's for the betterment of the Faunus, then it's a pain we can endure. What's our next mission? Containment. With the CCT tower still inoperable, we have the luxury of control over the flow of information. News of Adam's Do you now? has yet to reach Menagerie. But when it does, the citizens of Kuo Kawana will undoubtedly react poorly now that the chieftain has spoken out against us. It's my fault the Belladonna's had any ground to stand on. Do not concern yourself with past failures, Ilya. Focus on the future. We have an opportunity for redemption. What do you need me to do? The Belladonna's are the only remaining threat to Adam's assault on Haven Academy. Again, going so, with the assassination. They must be silenced. S silenced? You know, like tape speech. over the mouth. They stand in the way of truth. What do you think? <laughs> we would never put such a burden on you alone, of course. 
your brothers and sisters will be at your side. I like how the camera starts your tilting here. Your daughter makes you an integral part of this operation. Blake? We know how close you were with young Blake. Rest assured, High Leader Taurus has requested she be taken alive. But we cannot risk having her present to defend her family. But the people of Menagerie... We'll come to understand what happens to those who speak out against the White Fang. And we'll be left without a leader until our victory is complete. A necessary sacrifice, Cecilia. I think I'm starting to see why they called the episode so. <laughs> yeah. Who draws a creepy picture like that? She's right to worry about the citizens. It's possible. I mean, the one they are the kind of half on the shrine there. It is a risk we must take for our high leader. I will not allow them to ruin this. The Belladonna name has brought me nothing but grief. You've done well in finding the deserter. Bring her to me. Oh, Blake. I thought he was. Kind of talking about someone else. Before you slaughtered her family. I have a promise to keep. I guess they played the message again just for us, huh? <laughs> he carries with him a tremendous burden. Are we sure he is the one to lead us? For now. For now. <laughs> we must do what is best for the farmers. Okay. Our battery is running low, so... Should still last for the remainder of the Brother video. Yuma, did you see Tagira's messenger? He rests beneath the waves, along with his warning. That's nice. That well. Very nice. So, I mean, I. I kind of wanted to ask where they got the message from, but at the same time, I just got the answer, I think. Uh, so, yeah. I don't like them. Surprise. And I don't really just mean as in story, I mean, they are purposefully portrayed to, portrayed to be unlikable, but I just genuinely don't like it when the f story f focuses on them. And I know they are essential, very essential part of the storytelling here, but doesn't mean I have to like them. It just means I can't ignore them, which is unfortunate. <laughs> so yeah, I guess uh, Khan is going to be some sort of martyr for the White Fang, since the official, st official story is that she was killed by a huntsman. And as for... Ilya, I'm not really sure. I kind of hope that them asking her to kill the Belladonna is sort of the push she needs to get over her shadow and quit it with the whole being stubborn thing. Yeah, it's a bit more than being stubborn, but eh. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, Blake mentioned that because she's a cham chameleon, chameleon faunus, that she could live under uh, under humans, unrecognized. I always wondered about that. Couldn't most or many faunus, in theory, get surgery? If you know what I mean. If you don't, I mean cut off the animal parts. I mean, it's part of them. You know, the whole heritage thing that you just don't just want to, quote unquote, throw away. And I get that. But I would also assume that there are some amongst them who don't particularly like being a faunus. And who would, if given the opportunity, change that. Not all of them. Maybe not even many. But I'm sure some. And since the only real identification we have yet seen for faunus are the animal traits which are an addition to a normal human body I just, I'm just wanting to say, in theory 
You could, I think. So yeah, minus the Ruby speech, it turned out to be a pretty, well, not White Fang heavy. The first part was really more Blake and Sun dealing with the fact that Menagerie doesn't really want to help Haven at all. I mean, William 4 intro kind of showed them on the boat. We never really got there. Still not. But we'll see. It just makes me wonder if we're gonna deal with the White Fang as a whole sooner rather than later. I mean, they are on the move and they're gonna strike soon, I guess, since Adam isn't really the patient type. So I also, I'm also pretty sure he doesn't know about Salem. In depth, maybe he knows there is someone above Cinder and Hazel, but not who or what she is. And, you know, since they are humans, I'm gonna put the quotes there for Salem. Uh, he probably has no real inkling on listening to them when they say, Oh no, wait, this is, you know, kinda against our plans, he's just gonna do it anyway. So, yeah, my general idea is that perhaps near the end of the volume, or volume 6, is gonna be White Fang, white fang heavy and dealing with them and the partial assistance that Salem might provide. You know, even if Adam does strike first before he's before the plan intends him to, I kinda guess Salem would still back him up rather than just letting him get get himself and the whole operation killed, destroyed. It just makes me wonder if this is gonna end with Adam's death. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it did. You know, if you wow, if you wow to kill everyone, a certain main character loves. Usually, stopping these people needs more extreme measures. <sighs> what else? What else? What else? Yeah, Ilya, Ilya, I I Ilya, I Y L something. I think. Anyway. She, I'm pretty sure, is either gonna be persuaded or eventually see the wrong that the White Fang does to join the good guys. Good guys, again in quotes, since, you know, it's subjective. And, well, or the other option, they're gonna make a martyr out of her too. Perhaps, you know, killing her when she becomes a problem. They seem to clearly have no qualms about doing that to other faunas or White Fang members. So yeah, this is all for now. Next episode is looking interesting. With I'm still recording on with Yang and Raven. When we perhaps finally got that storytelling on our Spence Dark secrets, whatever that those might be. You know, Oscar is gonna learn them in time, but. And perhaps Ranger and Co, but Yang might get a bit of an early glimpse. Also a potential reunion if she actually opens the portal to Crow. We'll see about that. But yeah, for now, that's gotta be all. Until next time, see you then. Bye. Hello there, YouTube Jack here with more Ruby Volume 5 Chapter 6, known by its song. What a curious title, <laughs> actually, for once. Like, I feel the other ones were a bit more straightforward. I feel like. I, I can't actually say for sure, but it feels like they were. But this one, I actually have no idea. Maybe, you know, fairy tales again? Like, the songs sung by bards in Middle Ages carried forward to modern times where they are now, I don't know, pop songs. <laughs> Please not. <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't know. I guess we might just really do, uh, you know, lullabies, children, songs, instead of a normal fairy tale. We will see. We'll also see if Raven, ta what Raven tells Yang. I mean, Ospin's Dark Secrets, Salem perhaps, Maidens, I'm pretty sure he's gonna tell her about that. Since she also conveniently got one of hand. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited. 
I'm mean, really, I like the whole, the whole Yang Raven plot points as well as well as the Oscar Aspen plot points. I just love them. They're so interesting, especially since we get a lot of information out of them about all the dark secrets that have been kept hidden from us for four volumes now. So, we five chapter six, now by songs in three, two, one. <clears throat> it's raining. Crow? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Regular or the special? I'm actually looking for someone. Well, he is. By the name Shiro Wan. Ever heard of him? I heard he's a regular around here. <laughs> Who's asking? Ah, uh, secret code talking. <laughs> hey, I'm not some cop, if that's what you mean. I need Shiro for a gig. For a gig? <laughs> way back. Mm. Way back, huh? So, he's a friend of yours. Mm, yeah, I'd say so. He's a pretty all right guy. Well, in that case, you tell that jerk that he better not show his ugly face in here. Until he me, he always Really, just colleagues. Anyways, thanks for your time, buddy. I'll just be taking off now. <laughs> Yep, as Nora said, good luck with that. <sighs> Great start. Yep, <laughs> I was waiting for that. I'm gonna go ahead and assume the rest of the search isn't go. How does the scroll know to scratch him off the list? <laughs> Wow, just three names. <laughs> it shouldn't be funny, but his reaction is just amazing. <laughs> Heather Shields. Yep, let's run away. So I guess these are the slum kind of parts. Well, they talked about that. Like sort of the... Oh, uh, 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 hey there. I don't know if it was some sort of ring system. Look, pal, I've had a rough day. Do you know where she is or not? Daddy? Does he know where mommy is? I, I guess that's a no. I'm sorry to bother you. A very resounding no. No time for drinking, eh? Well, what good are bounty missions if you don't even have a face to them? And I don't know if he got the names here, or if he knew them from the start, but if so, well, you've done a lot of carving since. You got a lot of nerve showing up back here. Unless you're Wouldn't have checking here. this bounty board first been a good step? How much did Shiro owe you? Well, I'd say about 16,000 Liat. That's a lot. I guess. Wait, what? Man, you must be in some serious trouble with him if you're paying me off. 
His name is clear. Yeah. I guess he's not expecting them back anytime soon, huh? Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, five volumes and we... I think it's the first time we actually got someone refusing service to Faunus. I mean, it's been implied Thank you. a lot, so on and so forth, but I think it's the first time we actually ever see so, it. what's the truth? You know, it's better when it's hot. You know, you're really obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is that the truth is hard to come by. A story of victory for one person is a story of defeat for someone else. By now, your uncle has surely told Ruby and her friends plenty of stories. Well, he's never given me a reason to doubt him before. Well, that if you never know him don't exist. to lie, then you can keep lying, you know, in theory. <laughs> you and your teammates might as well be the poster children for the Huntsman Academies. Your motives vary, but you all enrolled to try and make the world a better place. It's adorable. It's what huntsmen and huntresses do. Not all of them. Some people are just in it for the money and the fame, but there's even more that are just looking to grow stronger. Your Uncle Crow and I didn't attend Beacon to become huntsmen. We did it to learn how to kill huntsmen. Makes sense. Uncle left that part out, hmm? In all honesty. Aside from the Grim, huntsmen were the only ones capable of ruining our raids and hunting us down. Our tribe needed a counterforce. No, really, I'm and Crow and I were not the age. genuinely that surprised by it. exams were child's play compared to what we'd already been through. We were good. So good that we caught the attention of Beacon's very own headmaster. Professor Osgren. Even after we were put on a team, I could tell he was keeping his eye on us. Back then, I thought it was because he knew. But it was Team Stark he was interested in. What do you mean by that? Constant attention, extra training <laughs> missions, turning a blind eye whenever we happen to break the rules and get into more trouble than we should have. Sound familiar? <laughs> Just a little bit, huh? What's your point? <laughs> Also, I'm, How much do you know about Professor Osgren? I'm gonna assume because Silver Eyes. He was a prodigy, one of the youngest headmasters to be appointed to a school. Because that's how he planned it. Because the man you know as Osgren designed those schools and has followers inside every academy on Remnant that are loyal to him and no one else. That doesn't make any eh, sense. Eh, Salem. But How could he have... No, why would someone even do that? Because old man Oz has a great and terrible secret. One that could spread fear across the world. One that he eventually entrusted to our team. And once I knew, there was no going back. Okay, so you told the whole team I then. I to know more. But with every new discovery I made, the more horrifying the world became. Okay, then tell us. <laughs> Why are you not listening? What's so crazy that the rest of us don't know? The creatures of Grimm have a master named Salem. She can't be stopped, she can't be reasoned with, and she will not rest until humanity crumbles at her feet. What? Yeah, that's sounds you pretty messed up. I haven't even touched your tea. Why should we believe any of this? Now you're catching on. So far, you've done nothing but accept what others tell you. But you need to question everything. You know you can stare her down all you want. I, I think I still think she would win. This crow. And your fool of a father. Don't you dare talk about my family like that. You need to calm down. Whatever the hell that is. Please. Listen to your friend, Yang. Your teammates never let you down before. You don't know the first thing about my teammates. About me. You were never there. You left us. 
Again, I think she was I... there a lot. <laughs> I know more than you realize. Not just about you, and not just what I've been told, but things I've seen with my own eyes. I know the Grimm have a leader. I know people who can come back from the dead. I know that magic is real. And I can prove it. Again, convenient maiden at hand. <laughs> you said Ty told you all about my semblance. Well, I doubt he ever told you, but Oz did to my brother and me. Okay, I'm intrigued. Go see for yourself. I'm gonna... I don't know, the bird thing? Perhaps? Mom? I guess. Yang, are you okay? I'll be fine once we could get her to take us to Ruby. It's okay if you're not okay. <laughs> you didn't believe what she said, right? I... Of course not. Well, well, I think it, there's gonna be some convincing crazy. upcoming. We have dust semblances, but I mean, there's no such thing as magic. <laughs> Finally, some of the bird things. <laughs> A raven? I've seen that bird before. Maybe if you actually recognize time? birds. Uh, Ah, oh, the music's just setting the tone so well. <laughs> Ta-da! Again, How epic entrance. You do that? Well, magic, duh. <laughs> or you could ask your uncle. You're letting us go? I'm giving you a choice. Stay here with me, and I'll answer all of your questions and more. We can have a fresh start. Or you can go back to Crow and join Ozpin's impossible war against Salem. I meet the same fate as so many others. A certain but rose, for example. Trusting someone that's kept so much from you. All I care about is making sure my sister is safe. Ugh. We're just gonna drive Bumblebee through there. Uh, okay then. Yay. If you side with your uncle. I may not be as kind the next time we meet. Yeah, like when they rate the place. This time either. I know. This isn't right. I get one or two of them, but all of them? Just talking to yourself? Okay. Raven. <laughs> That's a good reaction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's already eating my cutting. <laughs> the first batch is just about done. Awesome. Now we just need crow and we'll be all set. Yep, except you need food for really two more. Gonna bring that many people. This is a lot of food. Well, never mind then. You're prepared. Uh, I don't know, but it sounds like we can use all the help we can get. I'm back. Be right there. You're going to overcook that. <laughs> oh, no, no, shut up. <laughs> Ruby. I'm coming. Fine, you take over. <laughs> Just disappeared in a puff of smoke. Yeah, that tray is so going down. We didn't know how many people were coming, so we just cooked all of it. <gasps> Told you. Oh. I, 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 I,
wasn't sure if you wanted me around and... Oh, of course. I love you. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> I love you too. That timing. Twice. Group hug, come on. <laughs> this is too nice. <laughs> Uh, okay, Christmas theme, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to click that. Oh well. <sighs> That's a lot of information to digest. So, yeah, in the end, we didn't really get that many dark secrets from Ospin. Well, other than the fact that uh, his whole life uh, as a prodigy was orchestrated by himself or his previous incarnations. And, well, let's face it, the most interesting fact about all of this was definitely that bird form. Which apparently Ospin did. However the hell he did that. Yeah, I legitimately guess Crow has some explaining to do. And he better not talk his way out of it. With Yang. Perhaps, eventually, whatever happened to Summer as well. Uh, I don't even want to know, uh, in all honesty, about Summer. They've built up so much on this, somehow, without ever really showing much. Other than that picture of Crow. But even so, I'm pretty sure if we ever get this backstory, it's just gonna destroy me. So I kind of don't want to see it. <sighs> you know, all things considered, Raven was pretty nice. Really now. Like, from the whole bandit thing, if you ignore the fact that they... Went to Beacon to learn how to kill Huntsman. Uh, you know, she even served tea. She offered Yang all the answers she would want, a fresh start. I mean, I get why she wouldn't, why Yang didn't accept it. Just abandon the life you had for the past 17 years, or 18 maybe now, uh, to rejoin the mother that left you after you were born. Doesn't sound that convincing, but yeah. I'm kinda beat right now. And I would say I'm looking forward to the next episode, but following the pattern, I should probably look forward to the one after that. When we get more explaining and, you know, we fill in Yang and Wise about, yeah, Salem's real, so are maidens, so is Ospin reincarnating, and bird forms. Damn, the bird scene was awesome. <laughs> Just the music and build up and everything. <sighs> I'm gonna watch it again <laughs> now. So, yeah. <laughs> but that's all for now, so until next time, see you then. Bye. Hello to YouTube, Jackie, with more Ruby Volume 5, Chapter 7, Rest and Resolutions. Which I honestly have no idea what it's gonna be about. I mean, I guess sort of. Uh, Getting Yang and Wise up to date with the whole Maiden, Salem, and Wizard shenanigans. Mini Ospin, that's gonna be fun, but I kinda assume we will skip over it. You know, we have, we've we had the Maiden story, we've had the Wizard story, we've had all the stories, and I kinda doubt they're going to repeat it. So, more like cutting to them after they've been told everything similar to how, how we did it in Volume 4 with Team Ranger and Crow telling them.
except for the new parts with the gods and that sort of things. Anyway, yeah, so we've got three-fourths of the reunion done to this point, and I kind of guess Blake will take a little more time since she's still in menagerie and the messenger has been killed, and she kind of has to prevent the assassination of her parents, who might just escape with her then, sort of. That actually could be how it goes down. Uh, so the coup d'etat, in, or however you actually pronounce that word, in Menagerie, which results in the Belladonnas and Son having to flee to Mistral, where they're gonna meet up with the gang. That actually seems like a good plot, so <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and assume this is how it's going to go down. As for this episode in particular, other than an arm wrestling contest between Nora and Yang, I'm not sure. I'm also not sure how fair it is to use a metal arm for that. So, yeah. <laughs> no idea. Let's get into this. In 3, 2, 1. <laughs> yep, just resting and having dinner. Believe me, I've asked myself the same thing. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, but you made up for it, Mister. It's great when everybody can just laugh and have fun. <laughs> I couldn't have done it without Ruby wearing it down. Uh, me? Did you see Ren during that fight? I think he was out of control. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> I may have lost my temper momentarily. No, no, no. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <That's> awesome. <laughs> you did not. Yeah, right in the middle of the party. Please tell me you let that lady have it. Of course not. Even if I did really want to. No way. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome, all right. For the real thing. Wait, you've seen the arm before, right? Make sure to make good use of it. That's amazing. I mean, it's nice that you're showing it off, but actually gasping like this? <laughs> and it's just as strong? <laughs> sure is. <laughs> Wanna bet? Nora, please, now's not the time. Why not? I mean, when else but now? Come on, you can do this. Come on, Sam! <laughs> I don't think she wants to cheer. So you're used to doing this. Well, I'm not surprised, actually. The gun? Oh, an injection mode? What the hell? <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell from that. <laughs> I guess Yang's playing it off now, or oh, just genuinely enjoying it. A bit of in between. I believe in you. Oh, we're doing nickname throwbacks now. Wonderful. Yeah, just wonderful. I mean, the ice queen seems to like it. <laughs> so did not miss you people. Aww, oh she's smiling she though. really does like it. What went and warmed your heart while you were gone? Hey, you make it sound like I used to be terrible. Mm, yeah. yeah. Just a lot to deal with at once. <laughs> <laughs> it's been Aww. a long time. We've all grown in our own ways. Sure have, yeah. So? Well, think back to when we were all at Deacon. Would you say you ever did? This is nice though. Embarrassing? Or do you think you were perfect? Oh gosh. <laughs> I may have been a little too gung ho from time to time. <laughs> you? I tried to 1v1 a Nevermore on the second day of school. Yeah, well, don't even get me started. Mm, well, you have grown a lot, yeah. <laughs> that desire to go back and tell yourself not to be so stupid, that just proves you're not the same person you used to be. You're smarter, or kinder. So I guess we haven't really seen much growing in Not terms growing. from Ren and Nora within Beacon. Yes, that journey past volume 
There are a lot. Well, it turns out Ren gets real deep when he feels like talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. I thought I was pretty great in school. Even at the dance, when you spilled punch all over yourself in front of Yes, especially the dance. Thank you, Yang. <laughs> Why do you have a recording? <laughs> six kids possibly make so much noise eating dinner. Ospin, I mean Oscar. Oscar. Not Ospin. <laughs> I guess going through that again, yeah. That's that's an Ospin way of is the true. <laughs> so the maidens. Yep, Imagine kinda like that. Salem. It's all true. <sighs> yep. Miss <laughs> Zhao Long. Is this more or less what your mother told you? <laughs> I love the I love the fact that they don't I'm use Ospin's voice here. You forgot something. Thank you for that. You forgot to tell everyone what you did to Crow and my mother. And we're finally addressing that. Oh, great. Hmm. That's not a secret I thought she would give up so easily. Your mother must trust you a great deal. Well, it serves very well to prove her point. The ability to reincarnate, though a curse, isn't without a few key benefits. Much like the maidens, I too possess a certain magical power. Using this power, I was able to gift the Bronwyn twins the ability to see more. To move see free more, huh? Unburdened by their natural bodies. I... Well... Gave them the ability to turn into birds. <laughs> yeah, that's Rather fun. Sounding out loud, isn't it? Wait, what? Uncle? You turn them into birds. <laughs> All right. Now you're just messing with us. What else is new? What else is new? Tell me the truth. You know, we you have Crow right there. Ying's mom changed right in front of us. Except we never get to see it, which I guess would be difficult to animate anyway. Why would you do something like that? I mean, what is wrong with you? Yang, that's enough. We made a choice. We wanted this. You know, you make it sound like a burden or curse or whatever, but is it that a bad th that much of a bad thing? Granting this power to them was no trivial task, and I can assure you it was not done frivolously. I required assistance in gathering information on Salem's plans, as well as searching for maidens when their hosts became unclear. Okay, so have you done this with others? Like General Ironwood or Professor Goodwitch? Well, I don't think in this generation... As that might be, unfortunately it is not that simple. My power is finite, and if I'm being honest, dwindling. The amount that I gifted to Crow and Raven was, all things considered, Rather minuscule. Hmm. You see, centuries ago, I sacrificed a great deal of magic to four young women who I hoped would use my gift for good. So, they the wizard after all? Maidens. Okay. Well, that's a confirmation there. How long? It was never my intention to lie to you. I mean, not surprising in all that much, but... There are just some matters that I prefer to... No, it is surprising, never mind. Close Shut to up. The chest. I believe that's how you phrased it. <laughs> but so, he has been around since before then, huh? Everyone that's has interesting. Choice. The Bronwyns chose to accept their powers and the responsibilities that came with them. And later, one of them chose to abandon her duties in favor of her own self-interest. Mm. Now, all of you have a choice. If anyone wishes to leave, now is the time. There is no shame or disgrace in abstaining. Only in retreat. I wonder if he's also talking to Oscar, by the way. <laughs> so you're not gonna give a live demonstration of the bird thing? Yay. If Ruby sticks around, then I will too. If there's one thing I know about her, it's that she somehow always knows the right thing to do. But, if we're going to help, if we're going to keep risking our lives, no more lies. That's no a fair point. Truths.
Shrug. <laughs> What now? I mean, we're not gonna do the bird thing. I was actually kind of looking forward to that. In all honesty, it's a difficult question, one that I believe is best answered tomorrow. What do you mean? The road ahead is undoubtedly filled with hardships and peril. However, it's been far too long since you have all been together. Oh, that's nice of you. Tonight, enjoy this moment. He does such a great offspin, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Raven? Crow? <laughs> <laughs> took you way too long. <laughs> oh, awesome, though. Hey, ugly. Oh, great. Is Raven Bronwyn home? <sighs> you know, I've had a real bad week. So I and think yours is about to gonna get much here. worse. Oh hey! <laughs> Doesn't look like he What's... wants to cooperate, boss. <laughs> <laughs> then make him. I was hoping you'd say that. And yet you're not gonna do anything? Sure, let's end on that. Okay. That fell a lot shorter than it actually was, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Well, that was 12 minutes. But yeah, just time flies when you're having fun. And it's so great when they're spending time on just them sitting around, eating, having fun, talking together and all that. Also, Nora nailed it this episode. With <laughs> general her reactions and everything. <sighs> what else, what else, what else? I'm genuinely a bit disappointed that we didn't get a live demonstration of the whole bird thing, which I guess is sort of a lot more intimidate than I thought it was. I mean, Aspen said that he didn't expect Raven to tell them or to do it in front of them, so I, I don't really know what's up with the whole bird transformation thing. I guess it kind of blows people's minds, but they've been told and know about ma magic and everything, so... Honestly, at this point, it shouldn't be that much of a mind blow anymore. Well, then again, aside from Ospin, they really only have been told about things. Haven't really seen them yet. Yeah. I guess the biggest deal, in a way, was Ospin revealing that he is, in fact, a wizard. Which is, I mean, amazing on one hand, expected on the other. I felt like I didn't really react appropriately there. I just, I, this is a weird mixed feeling between being blown away and uh, same time thinking, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> so, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know how to react. It's, it's an internal reaction that's going on in my mind. Uh, yeah. What else, what else, what else? Apparently, the Brahmins are not, the Brahmin tribe is not that hard to find if they can just walk up to it. But then again, it's like a huge camp with a, border and everything, so, eh. Do I genuinely wonder what they hope to do? I mean, I said it before, but the Spring Maiden has had 10 years to learn her powers and everything, and Cinder kind of just got back from rehab, so I honestly don't think she stands that great a chance against the Maiden. I know she can fight otherwise, too. And rather well. And that, I have no idea what Watts is doing. In general, I don't know if he can fight or not, or what he's here for. But still. Okay, if two maidens thought, that would probably be like some sort of catastrophe level of damage. But doesn't really accomplish a goal of capturing her. So 
So yeah, not too sure what their overall plan is after meeting or while meeting or whatever. And that's more or less all there was, wasn't it? But then again, Ospin also said when he talked about Raven and Crow that he gave them the ability to see more. So I wonder what that was about. I don't think it's just the whole, you know, nobody suspects a bird kind of thing. And I'm still slightly disappointed that we didn't get to see that, or their reaction to Crow just turning into a bird. That'd be awesome, but oh well. <sighs> yep. Guess that will have to be all for now, so until next time, see you then. Bye!